We're talking today with Atlantic Lithium, ASX code A11, and it has a market cap of around 300 million. Atlantic Lithium is a lithium focus exploration and development company advancing its flagship Iwoya project in Ghana, West Africa to production. We welcome Atlantic Lithium Finance Director and Company Sec Secretary, Amanda Haras. Amanda, welcome to the network. Thanks, Paul. Nice to be here. Amanda, this is the first time that we've had uh, Atlantic Lithium on the, on the network. Maybe you can give us a brief overview of the Atlantic Lithium business. Uh, so Atlantic Lithium is a uh, explorer and developer in Africa. We have a flagship asset, the Awoya Lithium Project in Ghana. Uh, it has a mineral resource of 35.3 um, million tonnes. Um, we have strategic partners with Piedmont Lithium in the US and with the Ghana Sovereign Wealth Fund who are funding and assisting us in bringing this project to development. Um, it has excellent economics. We, um, we released our DFS back in June. Um, it has life of mine revenues of 6.6 .6, um, billion revenue um, based on a kind of long-term average of $1,400 um, per tonne. This is all US, by the way. Um, and, you know, a net present value of $1.3 billion. So it's an excellent project, really good economics. Um, and because where we are in Ghana on the coast, um, it means we have very low OPEX. Um, it's a simple DMS process, so low CAPEX, and will be one of the lowest OPEX and CAPEX projects in the, globally. So let's start, Amanda. Firstly, can you tell us more about the mining lease for the Iwoya Lithium project and the impressive financial outputs the project is indicating? So we, um, we've been, we lodged out mining lease application uh, around 12 months ago, um, and it went through the technical rigour of the Minerals Commission for about six months. And for six months, we've been working with the Ghana government to really align our um, the Ghana, Ghana and Ghanaians um, and the government's objectives around their electrification um, and being part of that global thematic, as well as ourselves in terms of being the kind of number one partner in choice in Ghana. We have a num we have only drilled three percent of our, um, our tenure, and we plan to kind of um, explore through the rest of um, Ghana and increase our resource. So we both have objectives through this process, um, and this kind of um, mining lease that we got have kind of really aligns with that between both of us. Amanda, it's clear the Ghanaian government is highly supportive of the company's project. How important has the relationship been to delivering the project to this point? Oh, look, really important. So we have always um, been very um, supportive and had support from our local government area, our communities that are around us. Um, we now have support regionally and centrally from the main government of Ghana. Um, they, as I've said, have um, you know high um, uh, strategic goals around lithium and um, diversifying out of gold. So they're the number one gold producer um, in Africa. Um, so basically having that alignment now means that we're working together um, to, um, to kind of create um, an excellent space for both of us in country. The Sovereign Wealth Fund has now taken a 6% position in the project. What does this mean for the advancement of the project and for Atlantic Lithium? Well, this is a strong guidance as to um, what's happening. Now, we can all see the M&A activity happening globally um, and the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Ghana, who basically um, collect the royalties and free carry interest profits from the gold producers and the other producers in Ghana, um, basically wanted to invest in lithium. And this is a way for them to do a commercial strategic investment. Um, and they took that up and we welcome them onto our register. Um, and it really aligns again our interests and making us part of Ghana, you know, Ghana, where, you know, a Ghanaian company working for Ghanaians. Piedmont has also shown itself to be highly supportive of the project. How important has their contribution been to date? And what additional benefits can Piedmont provide going forward in terms of technical contributions? So Piedmont have been our strategic partner since 2021. So we'll all know that what happened through 19 and 20 around lithium. Um, so having a um, having the financial financial reassurance from a strategic partner has been just really awesome for us, really, and it's really created the position we're in now. We've been able to aggressively drill, do our studies, and we've been funded through that. Um, and Piedmont also provide the technical advice um, on our technical committee. So it's been really helpful um, and supportive to have that. We also have um, Patrick Brindle on our board, who was the COO of Piedmont, and he's been an excellent addition to the board, bringing his thoughtful um, advice around what we're doing as well. So it's been a really supportive relationship. What's the current status of the drilling program? And do you anticipate recent, recent results will lead to resource upgrades? And how much further upside can you see from exploration? 
So this year we've got a um, 18,000 metre drill program and the results have been very good so far. Um, we will continue to have results coming out over the next few months. Um, we've had kind of good results on our infill exploration and extensional drilling. Um, and we'll see that kind of come through in the next in the next little while. Um, we've only drilled 3% and we really see that we will have a mineral resource upgrade based on um, what we've been doing. Um, the more exciting thing for me as part of um, this negotiating with the government is we will be um, getting a lot of our applications that we've got in for further areas that we want to explore. Um, and now that we kind of have cash flow in sight, we can then actually start aggressively exploring those areas. Some of them are highly prospective, and that's really exciting for us as a company. And it's been our strategic um, objective to do that. And Amanda, I have to ask this, uh, what's the status of discussions, if any, that you've had with, uh, with off takers? So there's been many discussions. So obviously I'm the finance director, so it all gets directed to me. Um, recently we brought in um, one of the large investment banks to actually manage this process for us. Um, I had, you know, I'm going to say 30 to 40 off takers in my emails um, and it just became too hard to manage. And obviously we want to maximise what this can be, bring for the project as well. So that process is underway. Um, we will be um, in the top 10 global producers we first productions in 2025. Um, the main plant will come on in 2026. So if you think about it, the next three to five years, and if you look at what's out there, there's not much, you know, much feedstock coming into the market. So it's really um, exciting and lucrative for these, um, you know, producers and um, battery manufacturers and OEMs. Pretty much every um, supplier across the um, battery supply chain is interested. And Amanda. What do you say to those that consider Ghana to be a risky investment perspective? Look, Ghana's um, had good, it's got good rule of law. It's been a stable um, country for many years now. Um, it, you know, it's on the Fraser Index. It's in the top few of Africa to work in. It's above, I think, Victoria in that respect in terms of being able to produce in. Um, it has, you know, where we are, we are on the coast. Um, you know, it's got excellent, excellent infrastructure. It's a number one gold miner. It is a great place to work and the people are friendly um, when we have, you know, staff want to come and work for us. It's, um, it's very easy to work in and very stable. And Amanda, correct me if I'm wrong, Carmela Harris uh, from the US was in Africa recently in, uh, in Tanzania, but I also believe that uh, she was in, uh, in Ghana. Exactly. And we you know we've got a US partner. Um, Carmela came to, to Ghana uh, as well. And the US are very interested now um, in kind of coming into Africa. Obviously, the critical med, uh, mineral space across the globe is kind of the thematic is changing. Um, and, you know, security of supply um, is also becoming, you know, up prominence more so than in the past. So, um, so yeah, Carmela was there. I was there at the same time, actually. We crossed over on the road, didn't quite see her in person, but yeah, no, I did see the flags waving as they went past. And look, to finish up, uh, how well positioned is the company to fund the, the development of the project? Look, we're really well positioned. Um, we obviously have the offtake process underway that will basically hopefully get a prepayment. That's kind of our ideal choice. Um, based because of our funding partners with Piedmont and MIF, because they've got a contributing 6% interest, um, our, you know, the need we have is around 40 million US and that will more than be covered by the offtake. So I believe we're in a strong position. It's very, um, you know, it's a good position to be in, to be a near term producer where your funding is, um, is sorted basically. Amanda, many thanks for your time today. No worries. Thank you. Nice to see you.